Retro Tech. Today in the Vintage Hot Seat, we have a classic in the world of classic multimeters, the Micronta 22-194 for your vintage pleasure. Well, welcome to another edition of Retro Check. Thank you, Darren. I thought you would never ask. Well, you know, retro. and in Europe as well, I believe in the European market in, in the UK, at least, they were known under the Tandy uh, brand. So Tandy was basically the same thing as Radio Shack. Super popular multimeters. I mean, growing up as a kid, hey, if you were any sort of electro geek, you had a Micronta in your toolbox. <laughs> okay. So on the left, we have that incredibly gorgeous Micronta. Check it out. And on the right, we have that Unity modern day multimeter. Prefer look-wise, do, do you have a preference? Oh, let me see, Darren. Mm. I, I like the older one. I couldn't agree more with you. You know, those retro meters have that endless, timeless appeal to them. Just say you're right, dear. You're right, dear. Good. <laughs> <laughs> the Micronta 22194 came out circa around 1989, 1990. Um, so this is definitely a vintage piece of DMM gear. 30 plus years old, still going strong, still looks as good as the day it came off the assembly line. Amazing. This is the original box as well. Came in one of these um, styrofoam ends. I only have one end. I don't have both ends, unfortunately. Here's the plastic um, bag that the leads came in. And speaking of test leads, oh yeah, these are retro. Check that out. They have the Micronta branding right on them. And um, catalog number 278703 Micronta 1200 volts max holy moly cannoli so check that out now these were pretty dull by today's standards but that being said you know very sturdy hard plastic uh, PVC no nice silicone going on here no 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 but generally speaking uh, well made test leads on the box as well look at that they're actually giving us a nice color overlay of what some of the special features of the meter are and look at that hfe something they bragged about 30 years ago transistor gain checker a capacitor tester um it is uh, built right into the multimeter housing as you can see and look at that continuity buzzer whoa so they were super stoked to be offering uh these types of added features to your multimeter multimeter manual as well look at that wow papers actually uh looking vintage itself isn't it now there's a DC volt maximum here of 2000 volts, although it does say maximum measurement 1000. So I don't know why that range is showing up for 2000 on both the AC and DC ranges. Interesting. Um, generally speaking though, pretty decent little uh, manual for back in the day. There's our little schematics. Well, not schematics, but graphics. Um, tells you basic functions of the meter. AC voltage writing on a DC source bias measurement, measuring three phase AC voltages. So they definitely got more into the tech uh, verse back then. Good stuff. Warranties really was hard to find. Um, so 90 days is what Radio Shack was giving you for that warranty. So three months and that's it. This meter has a really interesting color scheme, doesn't it? It has that red, blue, beige thing going on. Um, I like it though. It has that timeless appeal once again. Um, very easy on the eyes to read. And uh, that little pointer marker, at least it's uh, a different color as well, so you know when you're getting those ranges. And speaking of ranges, that range selector switch. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. One of the better I have seen in the retro realm. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, uh, altogether feel movement on that selector switch. Micronta, job well done. Now this meter was manufactured in Taiwan. Taiwan uh, for the Micronta 22-194. Um, telling us right here, only used with a 0.5 amp, 250 volt fuse. There is our battery housing at the top. That is not the original battery, of course. And like all of the uh, Radio Shack style meters, we have that nice little ribbon inlay. Just Give it a yank when you want to grab your fuse and you are good to go. Looks like we have an extra fuse in there as well in the battery well. As well, check out that tilt stand. Oh yeah. So this had a dual feature. You could use it just as a normal tilt stand or you could actually give it a press like so, stick it at the top and 
use it as a hanger. So um, dual functionality here back in the day. Oh, sorry. Interesting input jack arrangement as well. We have our high current over here unfused as well. Um, over here we have our low current or milliamps plus our resistance input. Uh, beside that our negative and of course the positive. Over here we have our capacitor jacks and our transistor jack at the top as well. So interesting setup I gotta say. Um, color coding, well none you can see other than that positive in the red. Um, it was much more lax back in the day. Of course to turn on the meter we have our little slider switch here. Uh, there you go. This has been untouched in over 30 years. And look at that clean, crisp display. Oh, beauty. Look at that, 30 plus years, no calibration since, and hooked up to that uh, precision reference, 4.99 volts. Oh man, beauty. So in terms of capacitance, wow, we only went up to 20 microfarad 30 years ago with the Micronta. So we have this capacitor socket over here and just put the, um, component in get your range this is a 0.47 microfarad capacitor electrolytic coming up as 0.461 looking good and as a footnote as well you couldn't use your test probes to measure capacitors you had to use the slots provided it doesn't work with test leads 100 ohm coming in as 101.3 beauty now it also has that uh, continuity the Audible, which was sort of a rarity 30 plus years ago. We've got it into continuity mode now. Let's just see what it sounds like. Oh my God, sounds like Morse code. Beautiful. Wow, interesting. So really, it wasn't all that loud, 62 decibels, but nonetheless, for 30 plus years ago, it definitely did the job. Telling you, with this meter, you really have to be careful with the test leads. Um, a few times I got mizzled here and had my negative going in to where the low current does. So yeah, easy to get fudged by my Kranta. Well, I don't oh. know about you, but I'm excited to take a look on the inside. What do you think? Let's take a look. Wow, we are on the inside. Check it out. Look at that shielding. Absolutely astounded. I mean, they just went that extra mile back then. They even have it sort of locked in with these little plastic runoffs. Um, really nice attention to detail. This is part for the grounding spring over here. That's why it's pulled back. But overall, yeah, just sweet, sweet. And the main PCB itself also has that daughter board attached to it. The rotary selector mechanism right underneath. But check out all the integrated circuits here. So check out this big honkin' Max 130. Uh, it's a three and a half digit AD converter with an onboard LCD display driver. And you know what, you can still pick these up today. You can still grab one today. Believe it uses the same circuit as the uh, ICL 7106. So um, very, very sweet. And just above that at the top is our milliamp fuse. Well, the milliamp they call it, but it's actually a five amp, 250 volt fuse. They weren't messing around back then. Bevy of integrated circuits on this PCB, as you can see, and some nice big large clusters of components as well. Check out those input jacks. Man, oh man, those will be around 100 years from now, never mind 30. They are just massive, big globs of solder, and uh, wow, beautiful attention to detail. Of course, we have that daughter board, and underneath it is the rotary selector. The daughter board just connects by those pin headers over here. Um, yeah, I'm not going to take that apart because I'd have to unscrew the top, but uh, you get the general idea. Oh, Rotary selector switch hiding underneath and uh, very, very nice design. Let's go a little bit deeper. Flip it over and voila, Mr. Selector. Oh, sweet. And look at all that soldering. Man, all done by hand uh, at some factory in Taiwan 30 plus years ago. They did a very, very good job. Those are those capacitor uh, standoffs here. There is the uh, HFE slot as well. Once again, look at those input jacks. Man, oh man, and that massive current shunt. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Almost forgot to show you the other side of the PCB as well. Once again, more shielding here. Um, yeah, beautiful, both sides shielded. A true Faraday cage uh, in the world of shielding. Piso, yeah, awesome. And of course the main LCD display, 
Um, they even have it partially taped here just to keep that uh, wire to the battery compartment housing, um, you know, intact. So once again, you know, attention to the little things. Uh, yeah, those what's that's why they call it the good old days, if you know what I'm talking about. All in all, very nice, very good attention to detail. Clean, lean, multimeter machine that still looks as good as the day it was born. Are right, we gonna put it back together? Come back with my closing thought. I sure love bringing these vintage multimeters to you guys. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. Hey, thanks for taking this trip down retro memory lane. You, me, and the Micronta 22194.